Stuck at school, unable to travel, Ted Chin created his own world of surrealistic photography. He calls it his little dream. This week on Make It, we're going to take a magical ride into his whimsical world. <laughs> Hey, Ted. Hey. How's it going today? Pretty good. Good. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Yeah, thank you. So you're a photographer, and you're a digital artist, and a creator <laughs> of all sorts, but tell us, in your own words, how would you describe what you do? Uh, I call myself like photographer and slash digital artist, but who focus on using Photoshop and uh, photography to create a surreal, manipulate um, dream world. And how did you get into becoming this uh, creative artist, photographer, digital manipulator? In the high school and the college, I was at this um, process of trying to figure out, you know, like, um, if I want to be an artist, like, what style I want to do and all of that. I had, like, taken classes into, like, traditional drawing, painting, figure drawing, um, pre-making, sorography, all of that. And when I about to graduate, I was like, oh, I'm actually really into um, 3D animation. And I was also like very um, heavy influence on like anime, um, movies, and uh, like Miyazaki stuff uh, while I was growing up, you know. So I was like, yeah, I want to like try to see if I can join DreamWorks, Pixar, you know, Disney, mm -hmm. trying to make some movies. Studio Ghibli. <laughs> yeah, you know, Studio Ghibli, all of that too. Trying to see if I can join the crew to create something that will impact the world, like the cultural, um, like that, mm -hmm. you know, to tell stories. So then I applied to a grad school, then um, I moved to San Francisco. And after that one day, um, I was on Facebook and my friend said, hey, there's this really cool um, artist like reception thing, like, you know, if you want to come. So mm -hmm. I got in there and it was at the Academy of Art, the school, you know. So, and then it turned out it was actually a three hour speech given by um, this famous photographer, um, Eric Ellens. And his work is kind of like surreal dreaming style, but it's like mm -hmm. very different than what I'm doing right now. But that just gave me an inspire, inspiration. When I look at the speech he's doing, he's like, oh yeah, I'm doing like all this work. And I look at it and I think about it, I was like, you know, I think I can do the same too. You know, I want to give it a shot. So the, the whole process, like you went to this, this one speech and that speech got you inspired to go down this pathway of photography. Yeah, that was Instead of going yeah. down the, the, the pathway of, of animation. Which is, I would say, yeah, it would just be like, um, both ways would be great. It's just a different style to tell the stories. Right. And um, I just happen to be better at Photoshop right. than like my uh, you know, oh, 3D okay. program. Yeah. A lot of your work um, does have this surrealistic, whimsical uh, quality yeah. to it. Yeah. How do you like come up with your ideas for these composites? I was heavily influenced by uh, animation and then film of that. So some of it was from that. And the other part was my life experience, like mm -hmm. the things that's happening to me or like things around me, like what I did that week or that month or something I felt that I want to put it to uh, uh, visual elements to present, to share that with people, right. right? So they can feel related. And sometimes it was just like a random idea hit me when I was looking at photos. It's like, oh, it'd be cool to do this and that. Surrealism was actually like, have a great impact in my um, art style. Mm -hmm. So um, I spend some time to research some classics or real artists like, you know, Dali, uh, René Margret. Mm -hmm. And I look at the, um, the modern like surrealism photographer and painter, you know, and I look at all their work. You capture all of the photos that you use inside of your composites? I have three or four different ways. First is like, um, I use uh, stock photos to help me to composite the result. Like one. Adobe stock? For yeah, example? Adobe stock, for example. And um, I'll be like drawing it down and then be like, okay, I need a picture of whale, mountain, and uh, a female lady or a mm -hmm. male model. And I go look for it and I composite together. And I was also in this um, website as part of a group like, um, there's photographer donate pictures on there, and mm -hmm. then we can use it to create, and then we share that in that mm -hmm. community, you know. So that was really cool. And uh, second was I uh, working with friends, mm -hmm. so it's like they have some photos. Like um, I will show you one later on. Mm -hmm. um, it's like he sent me the photos. Like, hey, can you do something cool with this, you know? And if I like the photo, I'll tell them like yes, and then I'll try to figure out like what I can do with it. And the third one will be like me actually going out to shoot it, you right. know. Um, so that's like collaboration with like different models or have like very specific ideas that there's just no stock photo for it. And then I have to gather all the props and make it and then try to composite at the end and present it like how I see it. You know? Do you have a preference? I mean, do you actually prefer going out and taking the photos or using somebody else's photos? Like what is it that, that you love most? I prefer to shoot the models myself because then I have like more direction I can give to them, like a certain pose or uh, gesture or position that I can control. So how do you do that? Like when you have an idea in your mind, how do you communicate or convey that idea to somebody else? Uh, I figure out like the easiest ways to communicate with other people is to uh, show them a sketch, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So I'll grab a um, paper or I have this like book. It's like called the Ideal Books. I was a uh, kind of carry around with me. When something pop out, I'll just like throw it down or write it down like what I want um, it to be. Mm -hmm. They will give me a feedback and it said like what they want to. So then I can like kind of redesign it. So it'd be like definitely more like a collaboration than just me like give you like full direction, right? Well, let's take a look at some of your photos. I think it's really, uh, it's exciting. Give everybody a chance to see like some of the stuff that you're doing and, and how you yeah. mark through or think through Magic. your, your <laughs> yeah. photography. Yeah, for sure. Why don't you walk us through some of the, the early stages of Ted becoming Ted? This is uh, one of my very early work. And, um, you got a, a chicken in the basket? Yeah, I think it was uh, so we're at San time, Francisco. There was this thing, um, Instagram company, they have this like weekend hashtag project. So it was, I forgot what it was about, but I was like, hey, I want to kind of create like chicken, you know, in the city from the higher balloon. But <laughs> yeah, it was just like so a Where did you get all the together. parts from this? So this is... uh, I forgot if I shot the base photo and then I got it from the stock image for the chicken, the basket, and the balloon. So trying to put it together. And you can see it's like very early stage work. There's a lot of like lighting and masking problem right here. Mm. So um, this is like at the first few times I tried um, composite photos together and there's a lot of like learning and processing and a lot of mistake I made that I didn't see at the time. And now I look at it and I was like, oh my God, this is horrible. You know, <laughs> like I don't want to show this to people. <laughs> this is one of the first thing I tried after um, one well, of the presentation I went, I mentioned earlier. So I asked my friend, we're on the beach, you know, I just tell him like, dude, go stand in front of the stick and jump in the air, you know? And he has no idea what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So maybe after like 30 jumps and he got super tired by it, got the photo at one. And then <laughs> I went back, I was like, yeah, I want to put some rope around it. So you can see like rope doesn't look that realistic. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to add shadow. At the time I didn't know how to do it. So I go on YouTube and tutorial over that, trying to figure out like, you know, Photoshop tutorial, like how to add shadow, how to make a rope and um, pop it rapid. So this is one of the early Photoshop, you know, changing skies and uh, right. all of that. <laughs> and you can see Shut like the range. difficulty about like blending in. Yeah, so all of that. The edge of the horizon. Yeah, there's just so many things about it. Like I would change it, you know, make moon different, the stars on there, the <laughs> blending there, the umbrella color, color correction was like. It's hard. It's only through these, uh, these learning approaches that you can actually refine your skills. A lot of times people will look at like your work and be like, all right, Ted is amazing. He was born that way. No. <laughs> yeah. and, and you definitely have a lot of skills, a lot of great ideas, but it's also showing that it's a craft that you have to practice. Yeah, it's definitely um, a lot of practice for that. And I'm also like super stubborn. So like when I want to try something, like right. I'm gonna find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna keep practicing until I get it the way I want it, you know? Right, right. So now with like my skills, I can blend it easier. And then with like um, different custom made brushes, I can make everything just blend um, more naturally than compared to what I used to do. But it definitely is the, it's the mind mindset that you want to put to yourself is like, you know, didn't work today, you got tired, like, all right, maybe I'll try again tomorrow. Yeah, this is, a, you can tell it's one of the early ones. He's like, mm. what is this? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at some of your, your more recent stuff, because I think that uh, gives a chance to compare and contrast. Yeah. So I made this last Friday for the National Donut Day. You know, so just made it one day. <clears throat> yeah, I made it one day. I woke out in the morning, and my friend was like, "Hey, Happy National Donut Day!" I was like, "What? What? what? Did you say donut?" So I was like, "Okay, I want to make a, so a, a cream filled, like, oh, yeah. you know, a, a cake donut, and uh, this is the glazed." Yeah, and people was like, "Oh, but it's in desert. Um, desert is like you know dirty." I was like, "No, it's made out of uh, cocoa." You know, um, this is my favorite work. You know? mm -hmm. Probably one of the um, work that I did was like kind of like got over like everywhere in the internet. It's like jellyfish flowing, um, flying above the cloud. You know? I think you have this photo like in Photoshop that you can actually show us some of the layers. Yeah, I have this one in the PSD file. It's showing you guys kind of like uh, a before and after. This is also my second time trying turning the daytime photo to nighttime. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this one is this the is original. Before. Yeah, this right. is the original. I look at this, I was like, well, definitely I love the toad tree, you know, and there's a girl standing there, but what am I supposed to do, right? So I sit there, I, I think I did the picture sitting on my computer for right this like a week or two, mm -hmm. and I went back to it, and then that's the time when I was like, oh yeah, like I wanna try and make like a Harry Potter thing. First, um, you know, I used the um, transform tool, you mm -hmm. know, common T, and then I changed the perspective on that. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to select the um, all the white space on here, because mm -hmm. I wanna replace the sky to like um, nighttime clouding of that. So, you know, um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, you know, like using a magic wand tool, quick selection, mm -hmm. or you can use like 
select by color range, mm -hmm. and you can also go into channel, um, select the alpha channel, and then mm -hmm. you know it will help you select um, most of the color. Right. I'll be separate with that. So that's when I create the um, the background. You can see it right here right. with the sky already filling in there. Mm -hmm. I adjust all the lighting to see like well if it's bright on the sky, then the right. um, it should be have like silhouettes and shadows in front of the mm -hmm. thing you see in front of you. So it became like this dark, you know. And then bring the um, girls back in there. And at one point, I want to try to see like, well, well, it looks cool inside of the girl. Like we have a deer in there, right? <laughs> so I cut this out, and then I'm trying to play around with the scales. I put it in there, and I was like, well, it looks okay of that. But I was like, oh wait, I was trying to figure out how to make the animal glow, you know, as mm -hmm. a magic spell, right? So one way I figure it out is I inverted it, and I'll double click on it and bring the effect for the. Um, inner glow and outer glow, mm -hmm. and then uh, have that totally looks like a magic spell, you know? Right. So like now it's glowing in the night. Do a little bit different changing for all of that. And then I bring it back into there. Yeah, I use like some smoke brush, you know, doing like different colors, and then make sure I change the blending mode to like screen on here, just to make it like brighter mm -hmm. and all that. So then we have these magic spells right here now. And then that's a time when I went back to add like highlights in here because then, you know, if you have the object shining in the photo or everything that should have like a little reflection of mm -hmm. the highlight on it. And after all that, you know, I add a little highlight here and then do like all the color correction, the adjustment of this and you have the final images now. Cool. And then this is like before and after. Yeah, it's huge, on a, yeah. huge difference. One of the things that, that you do a lot, obviously, is is masking. So yeah. maybe you can show us a little bit about what technique you use to to mask out parts of your objects. Sure. And so I have this photo right here. It's shot on uh, Ocean Beach. So one thing I love about Photoshop, well, I guess using is the Wacom tablet. Mm -hmm. So like what I like to do, this different method you can do. So use the W. So you have like quick selection tool, mm -hmm. the magic one. You can either change the on here. I like to put on 35. It's easier to select the part you don't want than select the subject you actually want to. Because mm -hmm. then if you want to do this, you have to like click all of that. But if you just select the um, background, and if you press Q, you can see that, you know, already select the part like I don't want, you know. Mm -hmm. So like that will help you do um, click all of this. So that's like one of the method. And the other one I like to do is also using like, um, quick selection tool, you know. Now let's just like go pretty fast too when you have, um, when your subjects are the thing you want to mask out when it's like already a different color mm -hmm. or like already stand out itself, using the um, quick selection tool just really helps to like select most part of it that you want. Mm -hmm. You press Q, you can see like, oh, this is the priority select. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do next is I like to invert the mask. Mm -hmm. So you press uh, Command I, so you reverse the whole thing, and then go into my brushes, press F5, so you can see all this control. And I like to put, use the soft brushes and make sure it's like 100% um, opacity and flow. Mm -hmm. And then just go in there, you know, like. So basically, you're just gonna paint yeah. in. So I like to paint it. I like to go like very detailed. And one thing I also learned about that, like I used to mask out the subjects like super sharp, like kind of using the hard brush set, mm -hmm. so like that. But then I realized that, you know, everything in the photo natural um, itself, you know, is kind Little of like soft edge, edge blending mm -hmm. in, right? And how, like the best way to control it is just using the soft brush and bring to like really small. Mm -hmm. So it won't left you like too many like soft edges for that when you're trying to like make the selection. Mm -hmm. And this method might take a little bit longer, but like when you need to blend everything looks like good, yeah. that's the way how I like to do, you know. And there's like the third method, uh, method too, is like, you know, people using a pen tool to mm -hmm. do that. So I like pen tool too, but I'm just not like fast enough with it. Mm. And it's all practice. Yeah, so it's, it's all about like which one works the best for you. With Masking this image, yeah. how, would, how do you get rid of like, or how do you solve um, the selection with some of these semi-transparent objects? Yeah, so one thing we can do, after you say, is also like where you want to put her, you know? Mm -hmm. So, let me just do like a really quick selection, just mm -hmm. want to see. If I'm going to put her like around the water, mm -hmm. then you don't like really have to worry about it too much, right? right? But if I have to put her like somewhere in the dry lens, then that's the part like, you know, 
either I can use the Kong stem to cover it up mm -hmm. with the part that's not transparency, or I can change the saturation with it. But I see. to see like right here, like pretty much, you know, even matching the line on the mm -hmm. um, beach with the water ocean, it kind of like give you a feel. And also it's like blur on the back, you know. So right. sometimes you can just like make it blend it like yeah. any way you want. Just make sure like, um, see that's like one of the details we have to pay attention if I like put her on here, you know. Right. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll put, I can, what I can do is that I can go in and select the rock, move the layer so it's on the top, then you can change in like different blending mode, you know, to see like which one worked the best. And then, you know, you can even bring down the um, opacity on here, just to kind of like make it blend more naturally. And then mm -hmm. you can create a layer mask and then mask it in, right? Mm -hmm. So then that would be like, oh, okay, like it's getting like, looks pretty, like there's rocks behind it. So right. it's just some like quick step to um, show you. Oh, that's cool. That, yeah. Well, that's really fun. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much for coming by and, and showing us your photos and your images and, and sharing with us your approach and your process. Mm -hmm. It's been really great chatting with you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for coming by, and we'll see you next time.